Well, Arnab, you sure got the debate you want. <laughs> no, I, I'm just keeping a very studied silence. I'm observing everything today. <laughs> I'm, I'm observing everything today, uh, Dove. I'd like to go across to Kawal Sibyl. I'm coming to you, Mr. Nahailo. I, I'm going to go at the end to our friends from China. So, Victor and Andrew, just coming to you for a minute. Kamal, what's happening here, Mr. Kamal Sibyl? Uh, I want to ask you about the Indian position, just from your experience as a veteran diplomat. The same question I asked Elizabeth, if this gets protracted, things can go wrong, Mr. Sibyl. Don't you fear that? Yes, but why should it get protracted? That's what surprises me. After all, Putin and Biden met at Geneva, really discussed things in depth about trying to reset the relationship. After, they, after that, they have had other conversations. The U.S. Secretary of State has had conversations with Lavrov. He has visited uh, Russia. Russia has given the written uh, documents uh, stating what they want in terms of uh, security guarantees, legal guarantees. The United States has said they will look at it and respond. They seem to have responded. Russia is looking at the response. And they say perhaps in a couple of weeks, uh, Putin may take a position after his advisors have discussed in depth with him what could be the next step. So negotiations are going on. And therefore, our position is very right. Until the negotiations are exhausted and there's no meeting of minds, everybody should hold their horses and not envenom the situation uh, and create more tensions by untimely statements about conflict and things like that. That is one. The other question I always ask myself is that if uh, Finland and Sweden could remain out of NATO at the height of Soviet power and continue to be out of NATO even now, so why can't rational people on both sides have an understanding on Ukraine? What is the need for Ukraine to become a member of NATO? Mm -hmm. Now, remember, in, in, in Putin's 22 years almost, there have been four NATO extensions. Putin has reconciled himself to the Baltic states and the former East European states becoming part of NATO. He reacted when Georgia was encouraged. And he intervened. That was a signal to the United States and NATO that there are very clear red lines. And Ukraine is the reddest of lines in terms of Russian security. And Putin has stated that... Uh, publicly. So what is the reason uh, for creating more tension, sending in arms, encouraging the Ukrainian government to stand up to Russia? And uh, and, yeah, and, I, I, and exactly. prevent, 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 exactly. prevent exactly. the implementation of the military. That, that's a question. That's where, where a... France and Germany to European power and Europe is going to suffer the most if there's a conflict to European powers who great, want peace great, great. and who have played a hand in trying to establish peace. But unless NATO is on board, unless US on, is on board, this will not happen. That's why Russia said that I must, they must speak to United States because United States holds the vital card and will take a decision whether ultimately NATO extension will take place or not take place. Uh, Mr. Sibyl, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Nahailo from Kiev wants to respond. Very critical question. Are we going to have a world war because Ukraine wants to join NATO? Is that big enough a reason? Why, why do you have to join NATO? If you claim your independence, uh, allow me, allow me. If, if, if you claim your, your independent and, you know, uh, Russia, Russian imperialists are trying to take you over, then why are you so desperate to join NATO? Why did India want to become independent? Why didn't you stay part of the British Empire? It was uh, good for many. Why did you? Why did no, 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 no. One second. There's no comparison here. No, 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 no. One second. One second. One second. There's no comparison here. There's no comparison here. But I let. I let. No, no. But the question is. The question is. You say. Why did India become independent? You are independent. Are you saying you'll get independent if you join NATO? Ukraine voluntarily gave up its nuclear missiles and had guarantees from Russia included that it would not, not be aggressed and it would not be uh, its sovereignty would not be violated. You also forget, and with all due respect to your Indian colleague, that it uh, and uh, well, the Russian colleague calls what happened in Kiev uh, uh, a 
coup d'état, whatever. No, why don't, no, no, why, why don't you just, why don't you just say, why, my question is, my question is, why, why don't you just say, and I don't know why, why UK, which is getting so aggressive in this, Miss Bro, why doesn't, why doesn't UK also, you know, just say that, okay, we will support Ukraine. They don't need to join uh, the NATO. They just need to say they won't ally with NATO and end it. Quell the situation. Or, or, is, or, is, or, is, or is Boris Johnson also inching for war, given that his own political position, like Biden, is a little bit under scrutiny these days? And his own position, you know, every, every leader whose, whose position is threatened loves a war, doesn't he? So that's why Boris Johnson, Biden, probably inching for war. Itching for war, rather. Ms. Bro. <laughs> well, uh, Boris Johnson is certainly in, in big trouble at the moment, and, and I fear it will cloud his judgment uh, in one way or, or the other. It's, it's, uh, he is clearly focused on, on uh, a police investigation against him. But can I just make uh, another point, which I think damage is already being done even without any Russian soldiers crossing the border. Uh, the Ukrainian economy is suffering. International investors are losing confidence in the Ukrainian economy. There is... In, um, uh, international uh, indicators regarding the Ukrainian economy are going down. So really, uh, the, uh, Russia could do a lot of harm to to Ukraine, even without going any further than they already are. And that that is uh, the dilemma of the moment, because Ukraine uh, can't really do anything uh, if uh, no soldiers have uh, crossed the border. And yet, uh, it's already feeling consequences. What to do? I don't know. Uh, but it is uh, the, the nature of the globalized uh, world we live in now that so much depends on international market markets, international investors, globalized, uh, uh, global, globally operating companies, and yeah. uh, 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 yeah. in a way that it didn't during the Cold War, and that's where we are. Uh, but now, uh, 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 Victor Gao from Beijing and Andrew Liung from Hong Kong, uh, is China remote controlling all this? Why does, why do I have, and why do so many people have a sneaking suspicion? that the Chinese are fighting the Americans through Putin via Ukraine. Uh, this is Victor Gao. I'm very happy to be uh, uh, joining this very important discussion. Uh, first of all, China has very good relations with Russia. China also has very good relations with the Ukraine. And we wish the Russian people very good wishes, as well as the Russian people all the good wishes. Now. Uh, I think if I advise the Ukraine people, I would say the best option for Ukraine is to achieve permanent neutrality. Because it is no fun to be caught up between NATO and the United States on the one hand, and Russia on the other hand. This is a recipe for disaster for all the parties involved. So maybe of great wisdom, of great knowing yourself and knowing every party involved, and you're not talking about small countries as your neighbors, you're talking about very, very big, important strategic countries as Russia. Permanent neutrality, like, for example, Aus Austria, Switzerland, or Sweden, and several other countries probably will be the best choice for Ukraine. But it's up to the Aus uh, Ukraine government.